Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Pharmacology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you a patient care scenario, and your goal is to develop a treatment plan that emphasizes pharmacological management. For an extra challenge, I'll be putting a one minute timer on the bottom of the screen. When the time is up, we'll do a scenario walkthrough, and then I'll give you my treatment. Enjoy the card, and good luck. Three, two, one. If you've watched any of my static cardiology videos, this scenario should be a piece of cake. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. You're dispatched to a private residence for a 68-year-old male complaining of chest pain. He describes the pain as a pressure that is in the center of his chest and has been worsening over the last 45 minutes. Your partner obtains the following vital signs. Blood pressure 164 over 78, pulse 84, respiratory rate 19, SpO2 96% on room air, and blood sugar 116. You obtain a 12 lead ECG and see a significant ST segment elevation in the anterior leads. Now even though I didn't give you a 12 lead in this scenario to actually look at, I pretty much have painted the picture of a patient who's experiencing a STEMI. STEMI of course stands for ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. In layman's terms, he's having a heart attack. ST segment elevation in the anterior leads usually means that the vessel involved in this myocardial infarction is the left anterior descending or the LAD. The LAD is the coronary artery that some people refer to as the Widowmaker. So this is a very significant event. Now remember, as far as treatment, we won't be getting into the weeds too much here. This is standard pre-hospital care. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Just like with all my other static videos, we'll begin treatment by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IV, O2, monitor. Now for this patient, I'll be following the acute coronary syndrome pathway or the ACS pathway. Treatment in the ACS pathway has long been associated with the acronym MONA. And this of course stands for morphine, oxygen, nitroglycerin, and aspirin. You can also use the acronym FONA for more contemporary EMS where you replace the M, morphine, for an F, fentanyl. So my treatment here is going to involve the administration of nitroglycerin. Sublingual tablets are usually the preferred method pre-hospitally, so we'll administer a sublingual tablet, which is 0.4 milligrams, and we'll give one of those every five minutes to a maximum dose of three. Remember, it's important to ask the patient if he's taken any sort of phosphodiesterase inhibitors in the last 24 to 48 hours. These are medications like Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra, otherwise known as ED medications or sexually enhancing medications. The administration of phosphodiesterase inhibitors and nitrates will actually cause a profound drop in blood pressure. So it is important to ask these questions. The next medication I'll give is aspirin. This is gonna be 324 milligrams given by mouth. I'll then consider administering morphine, two to four milligrams IV push, or fentanyl, 50 to 100 micrograms IV push. Now interesting to note, morphine and fentanyl don't actually cause the preload reduction that it was once thought that they did. The best uses for fentanyl and morphine are relieving pain and helping with the anxiety associated with this event. Finally, the last thing I'll say is rapid transport, but it has to be to a PCI capable facility, otherwise known as a cath lab. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more. And remember to check out my videos on static cardiology as well as my other static pharmacology videos. Until I see you next, keep washing your hands, have a good rest of your night.